All right, so I got these new headers mocked up here. Um, I was gonna reuse what we had before, uh, the old two into one. Uh, that one I just kind of pieced together from a handful of different bends and it was all right. I just wasn't quite happy with, um, number one, the quality of my welds and just the general um, flow of the exhaust, or the, the layout of it. Um, so I'd actually had designed and had these bent uh, a couple of years ago from a company out west. Um, I can't recall the name of them. Uh, if I can find the original order, uh, I'll put that down below in the description. Um, so these are 16 gauge, one and a half inch uh, diameter tube. Anyways, I wanted one continuous sweep here and then uh, levels out underneath and I've got about three quarters of an inch here. Uh, and it, they do clear the oil drain. The flanges and the collars, I had a friend of mine um, do those. I just sent him some drawings and, and he machined those. So this way we eliminate those big bulky collars and the little two-piece keepers from the original uh, Honda exhaust. Everything will just be one piece, bolts up nice and neat. So the next step is gonna be to figure out how we're gonna connect these underneath. So I've got a 45 here, I've got an 18 here. This is probably closer to what we need. So yeah, that's pretty close. Unfortunately, I only have one of these and I went online last night to the company that I used to buy this stuff from and either their customer service department no longer exists or the company in general no longer exists because you, you can't even find a phone number to call them. The website's still there. Um, there's just a weird chat thing that you're supposed to do all your support for, uh, but nobody answers that. So I don't have a source for more of this stuff, so I think I'm just going to have to piece together parts from what I have, which isn't the end of the world. It just means a little bit more kind of cutting and welding and Okay, so I've kind of figured out through a little bit of trial and error um, the ballpark angle I need to transition from the headers into the, uh, the mufflers that you just saw. Um, I dug out this 45 degree mandrel bend out of my um, bin of scraps. And I think if I'm able to split this evenly right down the middle, that's gonna get me pretty close to this angle here. This isn't exact. Uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble figuring it out because I mean, we, we need to angle out and up a little if we're going to do uh, what I just mocked up, what you just saw there. All right, so I just finished tacking the right side header into place. Uh, but fortunately everything fit together pretty clean. I should be able to just butt weld all the way around here So I'm gonna throw this back up on the bike make sure nothing kind of get bent out of out of whack as I was welding I just did three tacks for now if I need to um, Kind of cut that off and make adjustments it won't be that big a deal. I left these really long um, But again that shouldn't matter either this slides all the way down in the pipe the muffler actually rests about here uh, I may wind up trimming a couple inches off of here, but um, I actually may leave it a little bit long because if we switch to the shorty version of these mufflers, uh, that'll give us a little bit of flexibility in terms of mounting and where we wind up positioning it on the bike. So we get this mounted back up, we'll take one final look, and then we can start figuring out uh, mounting brackets.
right, so I got the mufflers bolted back on. A uh, little bit of a clearance issue with the linkage on the right hand side. Um, it shouldn't be an issue in the end. I'm going to switch over to uh, a set of clevis and clevis pins for each end instead of these um, heim joints here just to eliminate the, uh, the need for a nut and bolt. Um, that seems like a potential point of failure. It took me quite a few tries to get this right, mainly because you've got two different angles, and this is kind of parallel with the engine and frame, uh, but the exhaust isn't. So in order to get these two faces to line up with the components they need to bolt to, uh, you, there's some, some weird angles here. So let me jump over to the bench. So you can see I went through quite a few attempts here. Uh, these are just the ones I just I felt like showing. There's a handful of other ones. Uh, I, ultimately, I bent them out of two inch by eighth inch flat bar. So that's that's this here. I figured that should be plenty strong for what it's supporting. Um, not the most attractive brackets, but I think once they're painted black, you're barely going to notice them anyways. Um, I started out with just this really thin. I don't know if it's 16th inch flat bar. I like messing around with this stuff to kind of work out bends because it's just so much easier to work with. It's so thin. Uh, and this stuff I could bend with the little vice brake thing. Uh, I ended up buying this, um, this metal bender from Eastwood. Uh, it's meant for bending thicker metal. Uh, and it, it does the job. Um, by design, there is quite a bit of slop in here, which I get why it's done that way. Um, this actually can be removed, so you can flip this out and pull your piece of material out of there. I guess if you were doing maybe more complicated bends and ultimately you couldn't get the workpiece out. Um, this isn't really necessary in, in my case. I'm usually making simple bends. so. The whole kind of apparatus here moves around, and I did find that a little tricky to get, I guess, precise bends because I was constantly fighting just, it seems like slop in every direction here. But in terms of the, the force needed, it, it's, uh, I had no trouble at all bending this uh, two inch by eighth inch bar. Um, I also did a couple test pieces. Um, one of them was one inch by a quarter inch um, had no trouble bending that either so uh, it also is much much cheaper than like a bigger you know, press brake and it takes up almost no space at all which that was the most important thing for me i've got limited uh, workbench space and this thing i can just fasten to the bench with a couple of c-clamps while i'm using it and then toss it on a shelf when i'm not using it so neat little tool i don't know how often i'll use it but for this particular purpose, it was perfect. So in, in reality, that's probably what I'll be using it for whenever I need to, to bend up a bracket or something like that, and then kind of save my vice from the um, repeated damage to the internals here. So, so I've got quite a bit more welding to do. Uh, everything's just kind of tacked together for now. Um, I've got a weld around this butt joint here on each side. And then I've got to weld the, the bracket here and the collar on the inside. But um, I'm going to do that at a later date. The only kind of semi-unknown is chain clearance for the bracket. Um, but just kind of sighting down the sprocket, the rear sprocket, and then the drive sprocket up front. I'm not seeing any uh, interference points, but until I've got a chain on there, uh, I'm not going to know for 100%, but I think on the left-hand side here, things are, uh, the, the clearance here should be more than enough, but uh, that's the one thing I haven't kind of thrown back on there to check. Uh, other than that, I think we are ready to jump back over to the electrical. Once the electrical is done, uh, we should be able to hook the auxiliary bottle up to it and see if we can get this thing to fire up. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.